Hey, what's up everybody? This is Evan Carthy from EvanCarthy.com. Today we're going to be talking about the moving average crossovers, how I have used them in the past for my trading. And so it's typically the same as you've seen everywhere else when they say, hey, when you get a crossover, you get in long right there and it's going to take off. When it crosses over down to the below it, you know, you go short and it's going to take off down to the, to the bottom side. Well, the way I trade is I will always wait for the pullback. So just in this example that I'm going to sh show you guys right here, guys and gals, uh, we're just going to use the red one is the 50 EMA using the close. And then the blue line is the 200. 50 uh, moving average on uh, and the chart we're using uh, it, it can work on any futures chart you want to trade off of we're just going to use the uh, e-minis right now and so uh, let's here's one right here so here's the low there's the high so what I look for is I wait for price there's the 50 EMA right here it crosses over right there so what I do is I go back to the low and I put my low the Fibonacci um, but bottom of Fibonacci retracement slash extension level right there and then just move it up to the high so then once that happens once it goes up there i'm looking for a pullback coming down here and getting in long in one of these Fibonacci retracement levels you got all the way down to 88.6 78.6 61.8 50 percent and 38.2 uh it's just up to you where you want to get in uh it, obviously if you get in earlier at the 38 you're gonna have a lot more drawdown depending on where you have your stop loss at um, and obviously if you wait down, you know, to 78 or 88.6, you're going to miss out on some trades where they bounce off and go up there and hit the profit target. Now the profit target level is the 1.416 extension level right up here. That's that orange line right there, orange red line right there. And so in this example right here, uh, oh, and just to clarify, this obviously does not work 100% of the time. Uh, definitely use a stop loss. It's just up to you where you want, where you want to put it. Me, I'm typically more of a safer, I guess, uh, trader. So I look for deeper retracements. Um, so typically what I would do here for this kind of thing is I probably wouldn't get into about the 61.8. In fact, that's what I've done in the past. To wait until it gets to, to at least the 61.8, maybe have an, another entry at the 78.6, maybe my final one at the 88.6, and then my stop loss is all just going to be just under right here, under the under the low right there, because if it goes down there and hits that, then obviously this thing is is complete is completely lost. But what it does is it gets you a really good risk reward, risk reward ratio because your target's all the way up here at the 1.416. So for instance, if you do wait to the 61. Point eight. So you have your tar you target just slightly below it right there. Uh, you're looking at 50 pips right there when your uh, stop loss would be about 27. So it's almost a two to one. That's only on the 61.8. Obviously, if you get some that go down to the 78.6, I mean, here you're looking at about a 61 pip gain and about 16 pip loss right there. So extremely good risk reward for it to work. So really, if it even works, even if it only works 50% of the time, you're still going to make a really good profit off of this, uh, depending on, you know, if you just want to wait until it at least comes back to the 60. 1.8. So in this example, you know, it worked out, it worked out great right here. Now, obviously that does not happen all the time as I'll show you right here, because now we have one to keep on going along. Well, here we have a crossover to the short side down here. You see the 50 crossing the 250 right there. So when that happens, we'll just go over to right at the top up there, previous high. And then we we'll wait for where the crossover happened, which was the low is going to be right about down there for it. And so we're going short, but even if, you know, you wait until you get in the 61.8, 78.6 right here, or even the 88.6, it still doesn't come down all the way and hit the profit target right down over there. Now, it, if you had gotten 88.6 and it came back down all the way right, right around here, you know, that would have been extremely good profit for, for you right there. But if you are going to hold it until, um, you know, looking for the exit all the way down here, unfortunately, this one would have been a loss on that trade right there. So let's just keep on going up, do a couple more examples. I mean, it's pretty, it's, 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 it's really simple. It, it's just, uh, it's just instead of waiting for the, uh, getting in when you have, right when you have the crossover, which is pretty much what, you know, everyone else says to do over here, um, or everyone else says how, the, how they trade it, you're waiting for the pullback to happen for it. And in my opinion, I think that gives you a much better risk reward ratio, depending on which Fibonacci retracement level you get in. And it kind of puts the momentum in your favor for 
to get that pullback and you wait for that kind of like reload before it go, keep, keeps on going back down. And obviously the trends end, uh, eventually end. So it's not going to work 100% of the time. But like here's one right here. So here's the high. Here we have the crossover right there. So we go back and we look for the low was for it right there. There's the low. So here price come up, hit off the 50% perfectly. So if you're waiting for at least the 61.8%, you will be able to get it right there. But it came down, hit it perfectly. There you go. That trade's done right there. Uh, here you have one going here to the upside right here. So where's the previous low? Previous low is kind of all the way down here. So it's a real weird one. And actually there's the high up there before you had that crossover right there. Price came back down, started bouncing off some of the Fibonacci uh, retracement levels before, oh, you know what? This one actually did work out. Oh, I thought that was going to be a loser. Uh, now, actually the low's all the way down here. Excuse me. There's the low, there's the high. There you have the crossover to the upside right there. Price came back down, bounced off the 61.8% line perfectly. And there you go. There's your winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, if you want to look at another one right over here, here you have, see there's a crossover for the high right there. So you're looking for the low moving up to the upside. There's the low. Here you have the crossover. So then what you do right here is you just keep on drawing the Fibonacci retracement level until it comes back at least to the 38%. So obviously this is going to be a big move either either way, what you're looking for. So price comes back down. Uh, so let's just review it. There's the low. There's the crossover right there. We're just dragging our Fibonacci extension levels up until we get a pullback at least to the 38% line. Comes back, hits 38, perfect hit back, uh, retracement back to the 50% right there. And then Bryce comes up, hits it perfectly at the 1.416. Now you can have your Fibonacci extension level to be whatever you want. That's just personally what I use for my trading style is the X I look for. Uh, there's a guy I really like, a trader out there. He did his um, website, E-Mini e Addict, E-M-I-N-I -I Addict, A-D-D-I-C-T. He uses the uh, 23 point, or the negative 23.6 uh, level for his um exit i just use the uh 1.416 for mine it's just you know tomato tomato uh whichever one you like and as you can see i have some other ones um up here as well uh so yeah i think that's going about cover today hopefully that made sense and how when i have used the crossover strategy what i'm looking for again i think it does give a lot better uh risk reward ratio um from you know from when you just have a uh, here is a five-legged uh, move right there. I'll just go ahead and delete that. But it, it gives a lot better, in my opinion, um, um, areas for success than the standard, you know. Obviously, you got in short. See, there's the – hold on. Let's get off this right here. Here's a crossover. Like, if you had gotten in long on that blum of that candle, yeah, you're making real good profits. But how often does that happen? Not really because, um, you know, there's not a whole lot of people doing it. Um so uh, one thing I will point out, though, is one thing I've always uh, wondered about with this right there. So you see for this one right here, uh, Price, you had the crossover right there, and he never had the retracement back up to the 38% line right there. Um, price did come down, hit the target, actually hit off the 1.618 level before it finally reversed up and would have created a losing trade for this. So there's one caveat I wanted to talk about real quick. I'm glad this one showed up is... There is one other level I was looking at. Let's delete some of these other ones to try to um, clean this up a little bit. Where is the 678.6? All right. So it's the 23.6 Fibonacci retracement level because this is a valid line for it. But a lot of times you'll get some really sharp or some really just quick pullbacks that would initiate it if I was looking at it, making it a target level rather than initiation from the 38% level right here. But like for this one, for instance, it, it, it is really interesting. So look at this. The 23.6 was obviously kind of lying in the sand right there. I mean, price wasn't going to make it up to 38.6, 30, 38% level, and then it comes down and hits the target and actually goes all the way down to the 1.618 level right there. So that is another thing I had kind of thought about is if you do want to e be even safer with this setup, rather than waiting for the 38% level to be the initiator for when you're looking for the pullback right up right up here. So, you know, you're looking for there's the low, you're waiting for price to pull back up at least at the 38 before um, it's coming back down looking for your Fibonacci extension level target right there. To be even safer with this trade, you can just look at the 23.6 line right there. 
and see it hit right there and then it came down and hit that target and then we went down next to the next target right there you know the 1.618 so this is obviously a good setup right here uh it's just it, it, there's a lot of variables in play and you just have to test it for yourself to see what works best for you and how, how you want it how you want to 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 utilize it sorry i'm getting um tongue tied right there but let's see if we can find another one over here like here you have and, and show you kind of like what the difference would be if you if you did the 23.6 rather than the 38 percent line so here you have the low right here let's make it even there you have the low there you have the the break right there uh for it so what we're looking for is obviously the price to come back down so here we have the retracement. Now the retracement only comes back down to the 23.6, but goes up there and hits the target perfectly. So this trade would have been considered a winner right there. But if we're waiting for the 38% line to come down and get hit right there, then obviously let's go ahead and take the 23.6 off. So we're waiting for the 38. So we have to keep on going higher and higher. Well, there we go. Price comes down, hit the 38, and actually makes a perfect hit off the 50% right there and goes up and hits the target. So it's kind of what is your tolerance level, what's your risk reward level, and how safe do you want to play it? Probably the safest option to plan, to plan it this way is have the 23.6 level on there and use that. Um, obviously, you know, if you're looking to get in at the, like the 50% the level, uh, say you're looking for that, you know, you would have missed out on this trade if, you, if you're using the um, if you're using the 23, 23.6 level for it. But then on the flip side, like this trade, for instance, there's a crossover right there. Here's the top of it. There's the crossover. So actually, I take, well, oh, excuse me, there's crossover right there. So we missed all that stuff, missed all that stuff. You would have had a winning or a winning setup, or at least something where you wouldn't have been, you wouldn't have had a losing trade when the price came back against you because price hit the 23.6, finished over right there. So that one that one would have been dead and done. But if you were just looking for the 38% uh, level to be your initiator level, well then you keep on coming down, or I keep on coming down, right to down right there. There you have the initial 38. So that so that's when you would think, okay, hit the 38. Now we're looking for price definitely can retrace up, but the target we're looking for down here now is going to be about 38, 30.75 for it. But obviously that didn't happen. Price kept on going up, 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 up. And eventually, you know, broke that to make sure, to, to let you know for sure that, that that's not a valid, it's not going to be retracement down and hitting, uh, hitting the target down over here. So anyways, uh, hope that made sense. That's the way I've traded this in the past. Uh, currently, I kind of mix it up with what, what I'm using right now. I'm just using a 38% to 50% retracement level. I'll talk about here in another video, but I know there's been a lot of questions and, and the MACD crossover strategy is probably one of the most popular ones that uh, people attempt and fail at <laughs> because I know I know I have a bunch in the past, but that is, to be, to be honest, the best way I have found to trade it that's gonna hopefully put you to, in a position to maximize the profits while keeping the drawdowns uh, to a minimum and keeping you on the right side of following uh, the trend because that's basically what it comes down to. So anyways, take care, talk to you later, have a good one.